Today, I'm happy to show you all the first ever Burris Rangefinder. I had the opportunity to use it this entire hunting season and put it through the real life scenarios you might encounter. And yes, Burris did send us this rangefinder back in October, so technically the one I used would be considered a prototype. As always, anything we mention in this video or anything we use is in the description right below that like button. Make sure you hit the notification bell as well so that you don't miss out on any other reviews that we have coming out on the channel. As we dive into reviewing this rangefinder, I've broken down the important factors into the following areas. Accuracy, features, durability, packability, and price. When it comes to accuracy, she runs with the best of them. I was able to get readings out to about 1600 yards in real life circumstances with no trouble. Naturally, that was with non-reflective surfaces. When I tested the reflective range, I was surprised to see it stretch out to 2400 yards, which is well beyond the assumed 2000 yards that the title suggests. As far as the speed goes, I have no complaints here. Probably one of the quickest readings I have seen, which is always a plus. Okay, let's talk about features packed into this rangefinder. One thing I appreciate is that Burris went the extra mile and not only created different modes to fit the way different people range, but also offered an auto option for those who don't wanna mess with it. For those of you that wanna know, here's a quick rundown of the modes. There's the standard sport mode that takes the most prominent object in the sight window and ranges it. Then there's the hunt mode that takes debris into account and shows the furthest ranged object in the sight window. And of course, auto mode, which gives the average distance of all the items in the picture. Auto does pretty well, but since most of the rangefinders I've used mimic the sport mode, I tend to stick with that when I'm out hunting. If you wanna mess around with the different modes, they kind of hid the mode button. It's on the left side of the rangefinder where the raised logo sits. And when you click through, you'll be able to see the various indicators in the sight window, so you can tell which mode you're on. My last point to talk about the modes is the added scan feature. If you hold down the range button, it quickly cycles through whatever distance it's pointed at. Pretty nice when you aren't sure if you have the right range and want to quickly see every possible range you could be. Another feature that deserves to be noted is the different range readings that this gives. There's not only a line of sight range, but also a horizontal range. If you want to know about the difference, let me know in the comments below and I can do a little bit more in-depth video and let you know kind of how it would be used in a hunting situation. Next up is durability. I definitely put this rangefinder through its paces this season and it never failed. Batteries lasted the whole time, I had no trouble when it came to water or snow, and I had no fear of breaking it no matter where I threw it in my pack. And to that note, that kind of leads me to my next point, which is packability. This is probably my only complaint, if you will, that I have about this rangefinder. When you first pick it up, it just fits a little bit bigger and it feels a little bit bigger than is expected. Not a huge deal, and from the looks of it, it actually allows for a little bit better protection and durability when dropped or mishandled. So something to note, but honestly, not that big of a deal. And then last but not least is the price. As of right now, the MSRP is $359.99. When I look online, it always seems like the 2000 yard rangefinders sit between about $350 to $400, so I think this price point is definitely comparable, especially when you consider the fact that the expected range of most of the rangefinders is actually slightly less than advertised in the title, but this one is actually more, with the furthest range being 2400 yards rather than 2000. But yeah, that's about it. I had a blast testing this out this whole season. I gotta say, Burris did pretty well for their first rangefinder ever. I hope this helps, and make sure you share it with a buddy that sucks at estimating ranges, and let us know in the comments below what you want us to review next.